<coughs> the following interview was conducted with Donald Powers, uh, member of the Board of Trustees from 1975 to 1990 for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Tuesday, April 29, 2008 at his office in uh, Cherville, Indi Indiana. Also sitting in is Valerie Yazoo, the diversity, one of the diversity fellows. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, Oral History Librarian. Welcome. Tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents. Well, I was born in a place called Harrisburg, Kentucky. And uh, I moved to Indiana where I was in high school and graduated from Short Ridge High School in Annapolis. And Ended up going to Purdue University as a student that fall, and that was in 1938, a long time ago. What was the campus like when you came? Well, we had about 4,500 students at that time, and it was much smaller than it is now, obviously, both in numbers and in size. Uh, <coughs> I uh, went to Purdue because my folks uh, told me that's where I had to go. Uh, I was born been going to go to IU, but the kids that lived down the street for me a year ahead of me went down to IU and got in all kinds of trouble, so Purdue, my folks said, you're going to Purdue, period. <laughs> <laughs> And it wasn't a bad choice. It worked out fine. Do you have any uh, siblings, any brothers or sisters? No. You're the only child? Yeah. Okay. What did you major in when uh, you were in? What Ag. You're, in agriculture? No. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, yeah. What were you in? Did you join? Were you in a fraternity? And uh, what about some of the about athletics or any of the student clubs? Yeah. I was about in all of them. I was. Uh, Lambda Chi Alpha fraternity, president of the house, and fraternity president's council, and Gimlet, and Iron Key, and what all? Quite a few then, right? Yeah. Do you go to the football games and basketball? Yeah, I, I uh, have a box at the stadium, which I've kept all these years, which uh, we usually take about uh, 12, 14 people to the football games. I used to take a busload, and it got to be too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh. After you, what year did you receive your degree? 1947, I think it was. I uh, should have graduated from 42, but I dropped out and spent some time flying in the Navy for the next five years or so and came back. Uh, I got out of the Navy in 46 and uh, went back to school to finish up. I had a semester to go, but I ended up, I had so much fun, I stayed a whole year. Um, Had the champ uh, campus changed a lot when you came back? Did you find what differences were? Was it yeah, more? well, of course, when I came back, it was uh, much bigger than it had been before. And uh, before you kind of knew everybody. I came back in uh, uh, 46. Well, it was. Uh, a lot of people but after most of them were. Uh, there was an awful lot of veterans because the war had been over in '45, I think it was, and, mm -hmm. uh, and they had the veterans educational way. But that helped them, and they were all going to school. Good. Didn't it party. Still party, which they'd learned in the military. Where did you serve? Were you in in this country during the war, or do you? I uh, was out in the South Pacific. I, 
uh, flew Navy airplanes off the carriers out there. And, uh, Were you in the Naval Air, Naval Air Force, or? Yeah. Okay. I flew in the Navy for a lot of years. I didn't really stop until well, I flew for 17 years in the Navy and the reserves of re active duty. And uh, if I stayed 18 years, I got a pension, but I quit in the 70s. Okay. So. <laughs> I bet that's a challenge trying to land and take off on the car on a, on a carrier. Yeah, it can be. Uh, sometimes it can be kind of exciting. <laughs> We were in night fighters out there and flying off the carriers at night was the time, uh, well, it was pretty hairy. I would imagine, yes. Well, After you've, um, then you came back and finished at Purdue. Yeah. And then tell us, what was your career path after that? Well, I went to work for the university as a assistant county agent in Lake County up here and uh, I was there doing 4-H club work and whatnot for, I don't know, how many years, seemed like an eternity. And the Korean War came along and I was recalled to active duty in the Navy and went back out in the Pacific. and. Uh, and when I came back, boy, I decided if I was ever going to strike out on my own, it was time to do it. So I did. Mm -hmm. Went in the insurance real estate business, and uh, it was very good to me. So Good. Very. Tell us a little about your family. Did you meet your wife at Purdue? Uh, I'm on my second wife now, and... Uh, she went to IU. Uh, my first wife went to Purdue, and uh, she died several years ago. And uh, she was a wi fi there. And, uh, very active in campus activities. Mm -hmm. So was I. At the mm -hmm. time. So. Do you have any? Do you have any children? Did they? If yeah, we had one, one daughter. She go to Purdue. Uh, she went to uh, DePaul. Okay. And then I think she got her master's and, and maybe her doctorate from Purdue. But good. She went to undergraduate down at DePaul. Very good. Okay. Uh, let's talk a little bit about when you were on the Board of Trustees. You were appointed by Dr. Bowen? Uh, Bowen. Right. In yeah. 1975? Yeah, I okay. guess that's your date. I okay. don't remember exactly. But I, uh, <clears throat> Do you recall how you, you learned of the appointment? Yeah. Uh, he was at the house for breakfast one morning and uh, he uh, said to me, I'm going to appoint you the Board of Trustees at Purdue. And I said, my God, I don't know anything about being a trustee at Purdue. And uh, I said, I think maybe you ought to think twice about that. He said, no, I want you on the Board of Trustees at Purdue. So that afternoon, uh, after he had announced that I get calls from John Hicks and whatnot because it came as a shock to them. They wasn't expecting me. Uh, and I hadn't been active in Purdue, so to speak, so it was, uh, I think it was kind of a shock to the university. Mm -hmm. You're who's this character coming along, so. New person on the board, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
Now, I know the primary function is still housekeeping, keeping the university. Now, talk about a couple things that you're, that the board is involved in when it's the budget, is it not? And, yeah. Uh, and the tuition, those are big challenges. Yeah, they set the rate on the tuition and dorm rates that various institutions. Right. They, the year that you came on was that wasn't that the first year that the student trustee, the voting member, seventy five when the first student trustee was they on there. They had a student trustee before. Uh huh. But that might have been the first year or close to it. So they were yeah. voting appointed by the governor. Yeah. I see. Okay. All right. Um, what are some, uh, um, you are in charge of appointments of the deans and you and then you were elected chairman of the board. You were chairman of the board for a long time. Yeah, I. Uh, oh, I don't know, it was ten, twelve years or something. I was right. President of the board of trustees, and uh, I used to joke that uh, the wheels on my airplane wouldn't touch the the uh, field while it. Uh, Purdue until everybody on the campus knew I was there every year. So, you used to fly to to down to Purdue. Oh plane? yeah, oh. I used to fly all the time. I, I still have an airplane, but I don't fly it anymore. I I hire a flown around. But I I I guess I could fly, but I. Can I think that maybe my age and I, discretion is a little part about <laughs> I've lived a long time. So, a <laughs> uh, um, couple of the other things. You do. Uh, how does the, the board elect their officers? You uh, do they do that on a? How is the? Um, what are some of the officers that? Uh, well, in addition, they nominate somebody to be president. Uh, uh, Maury Kanoi was president, uh, and he was leaving, and the guy that was vice president, well, God, what was his name, he was from the pharmacy school. There's a building named after him. Now. Hi, would that be Heine? Heine. And uh, he was elected uh, chair, but he said, I only want to serve one year, and because uh, he wanted to get off the, he wanted to retire from the board, so I was elected vice president, I think it was, and the president, mm -hmm. when he went off, and I was president of the board for, I don't know, seemed to me like forever. To time. Quite a few years, but um, then... Uh, some of the other things that you're involved in, uh, you want to be the uh, athletic prices, the athletic for athletic prices for the tickets. Is that one of the things the board's involved in? Yeah, we. Uh, I used to joke that uh, I hired uh, three or four football coaches when I was president of the board, but I only hired one president. Football coaches, none of them worked out, but the president worked out, so <laughs> I guess I got the right one. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about, you were about the presidential search committee. The appointment of the president is one of the key major functions of the board, and yeah. uh, tell us, that search, You were, were you the chairman of the search committee? that? That's uh, for the replacement for Dr. Hansen? I was Hansen. president of the board and I, uh, oh, I ran all over looking for a new president. Uh, uh, I invited the guy that was uh, uh, president of uh, one of the California colleges for a weekend, and everybody, I think, thought he was going to be the president, but uh, he uh, he 
would have probably worked out, but uh, we really didn't offer it to him. Mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, John Hicks called me up one day and he says, I've got a guy you ought to go see. Uh, and I said, well, who's that? And he told me and I called him down at, he was dean of the med school at IU at the time. And uh, I called him, went down there had lunch with him and I said to him, if you were offered the presidency of Purdue, would you take it? And he hesitated a moment and said, yes. I said, you'll be hearing from me in a, two or three weeks. And uh, I went back and went to the faculty senate and told them what I was going to do, and they went along with it. And uh, I uh, never will forget that it's some old gal professor that was on the Senate that spoke up when I was about to leave and said, Mr. Powers, is, it, is uh, Mrs. Bering a, a college graduate? And I thought, oh my God, I was hiring the president. I didn't think about getting the answers on his wife. <laughs> and, uh, and the, I had to say, I can't tell you, but uh, I found out she later she was been a, a honor graduate from Pitt, and she had her, I think, her master's. I don't know where she had her doctorate or not. Hmm. But uh, for the research, right yeah. for the researchers that are going to be using this, the search committee. Did you use an outside uh, search firm at this? For this one, or was it? And uh, who was on? Was the committee faculty and the board? Yeah. Uh, I'm afraid I did it all backwards. I primarily did it myself, searching it because it's hard. It's such a challenge. The committee. Uh, well. Uh, I took a bunch of them out to Iowa on one trip to interview some person out there. It was a disaster. Uh, the person was, I think, uh, the president of Iowa State or something out there. And uh, uh, he was a uh, a good individual, but uh, but time we got through interviewing him, him talking to the search committee, I could tell he wasn't about to leave Iowa State and come to Purdue. So you know, it uh, it I found it uh, searching for a president. It's one of those things that uh, you got to get somebody located that you think would be good and uh, hope your judgment is right and uh, then take it to the committee and get them to endorse it and, and that's eventually how I did it. I, John Hicks gave me uh, Steve's name and said I ought to go see him and I thought my god uh, he's a dean of med school uh, what was it? Dean of the med school, do running a, an engineering school. But I went down and talked to him, and uh, I, uh, he and I hit it off. Uh, in fact, we're still friends. He's on my board up here now. Mm -hmm. uh, comes up, and stays at the house once a month. Uh, board meeting, but uh, uh, I just thought he would make a good college president and uh, I asked him if he would take it. He said yes. And 
I said, well, they can hear from me shortly. And I went back and got everybody in. Uh, and I think I told you the story already, but after I was finishing up with the back of the Senate, some old professor, lady professor, spoke up in the window. Mrs. Bering was a college graduate, and I thought, oh, hell. I screwed up again. I <laughs> forgot to ask. So. Uh, you have to watch, and confidentiality is a key thing, too, isn't it, when those for the presidential searches? Yeah. It, uh, you know, uh, some of the people that you might be interested in, and they'll talk to you, but they don't particularly care. They have the institution where they are, know that they are they might be leaving because they might uh, yeah. urge them to leave when they didn't want them. So it, uh, they're interested in going someplace they figure they'll jump up the ladder, but which Purdue University always was. So it was President Purdue's uh, rated pretty high on the. Mm -hmm. Presence list, I suppose, Harvard and Yale uh, sure. might uh, take exceptions to that, but uh, most people refer to Michigan and Purdue as the, the Harvard and the Yale of the Midwest. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm oh. not sure Michigan wants to, doesn't prefer to have it. Uh, that uh, Harvard is subject <laughs> less than that. <laughs> what are some of the other, when you look back, what are some of the other things on the board that uh, you, as you look back that you were involved in pretty much? Oh. Uh, that, that you recall? I don't know. I was. Uh, you worked pretty closely on the with. Board the, for a long time. I, uh, you work pretty closely with the vice presidents as well. The board does, like uh, financial. Yeah. We. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes I thought I got too involved in the affairs of the university. Yeah. But, uh, Was there much construction going on at the time that you were on the board? Buildings and things? Yeah, there was uh, a lot. I That's forget whether the music hall was under construction or not. And yeah. the bell, the bell tower came afterwards, though I think the yeah. bell tower, yeah. Uh, but uh, was the we had uh, a heavy construction schedule all the time. That it takes a lot of time to get the get those lined up and things. Yeah. Yeah get the contracts and things of that sort. <clears throat> uh, let's see what else. Uh, one of, um, and then you do all the appointments for the deans and the distinguished professors and things. And they've increased on the distinguished That's professors, haven't one they? One time I made a statement that uh, I'd been involved in appointing every dean and vice president of the university. And uh, and the heads of all the regional colleges. So it's been I've been around a long time. So <laughs> uh, what's your liaison with the uh, regional campuses? How does what's the board's liaison with the regional campuses? What uh, do, do you have? do you touch? Do you uh, you appoint the chancellors of them and yeah. the appointments for those? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They did at that time. Okay. I don't know. Today, whether they're a regional boards appoint them or not. Right. But and you um, did you hold meetings often or sometimes at the regional campuses as well as in the West Lafayette? Yeah, we tried to meet uh, uh, at each of the regional campuses ever so often. Okay. So right. It, uh, and then you participate in the commencement every 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you go to the commencements at the regional campuses as well? Yeah, I did. When I was chairman of the board of Trish many years, I was always at the regional campuses. And I think I wore a damn cap and gown uh, umpteen hundred times uh, through the course of the years. It, uh, There's quite a few uh, commencements, particularly in the spring. Yeah. Yes. Okay. In fact, uh, I had an office up next to the uh, boardroom in the administration building at Lafayette. And so. That was handy to have. Yeah. Yes. Um, you were a director for the Purdue Research Foundation. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that when you were on the board? Yeah. Well, it's a. Uh, the Research Foundation is uh, first one of the ministry of control for Purdue. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, it uh, handles the money and the endowments and all of that. Okay. And uh, it's uh, Well, it's you know the places where the where the power is. That's one of them, Purdue. Okay. All right. Okay. And there's also the Ross Aid. Were you involved? The Ross Aid Foundation. That's another one. Yeah. That's different. Okay. And that's that still goes though, does it not? Yeah, the Ross Aid. Is, uh, <coughs> I forgot just what the. All right. Okay. Description of it is that the Ross Aid Foundation was set up by David Ross and uh, George Aid primarily to build a football field way back when, mm -hmm. where Ross Aid Stadium is. So, mm -hmm. All right. So, and still. One of the things that while you were on the board was that Vision Twenty One, the fundraising. Yeah. Yeah. That was the big that was a big campaign. Yeah. And we raised more money than Purdue had ever raised before. But I think since then they passed the <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, And I want to also uh, comment that you got an honorary doctorate in ninth from Purdue. Yeah. That's very nice. Congratulations. Do you know? Do you recall how you learned about that? Did they give you a call? Yeah, they, uh, Dr. Berry informed me that I was going to get an honorary doctorate. And I said, "Well, thank you very much." I think I've had, uh, I don't know how many honorary doctors from different universities in one of my very nice. colleges. So. That's very nice. And you also were a distinguished, you got distinguished alumni from the Purdue Alumni Association. Yeah. yeah. At one time. That's very nice. I was active at Purdue over a great number of years. Right. Enjoyed it. Still keep a box in the stadium down there. Take people down to football games. And uh, still have a private parking place for the football game. That helps. That helps. And uh, over in the parking garage across from the Union and whatnot. So. I never use it anymore, but uh, it's still there, I guess. It's still there. Yeah. If I asked you what, uh, do you have a favorite Purdue tradition after all in, that comes to mind? Any huh? Any Purdue tradition that's, that's a favorite of yours? 
like Boilermaker Pete or the Purdue engine? Uh, the Boilermaker Special? I like them all. Okay. What about an outstanding event in your life? One come to, what would you like to share with us? You have an outstanding event in your life? Oh, God. My life has been a successions of highs. I, I, but I, some of the exciting times were flying fighter airplanes off the carriers out in the Pacific during the war. Mm -hmm. and, uh, It, uh, I suppose, uh, one of the things that uh, I kind of laughed at at one time was uh, uh, I got leave, we got head out of Okinawa and carrier and had to come all the way to Hunter's Point. Frisco for to do repair on the care well. All got two weeks leave. And I got home and the next morning I got a telegram to report back to Air Pack. So I was home one night on the airplane going back and I get out to the west coast and uh, report in. They said, Well we've got a reservation for you on the flight to Honolulu tonight. So, so I went over and got, uh, I said to the girl, I said, uh, what if I miss a flight? She said, we'll have you on it tomorrow. <laughs> so I, I figured that missing the flight wasn't gonna get me out of it, so might as well go. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, I, out to Hawaiian Islands and uh, was ordered down to one of the islands report to a squadron and I reported in and uh, I said to the duty officer, I said, who the hell is the skipper of the squadron? He said, Danny O'Neill. And I said, no, that's O.B. And he called me back get me away from home. <laughs> so, but Danny had taken over a problem squadron. He'd agreed to take it if he could have a couple of his former flyers or what it was with him. So we took over a problem squadron and uh, got it going, got it straightened out. But, uh, they weren't ready for combat and they had to be uh, ready, so. Good. You came to the rescue. Huh? <laughs> you came to the rescue. Yeah. yeah. Any um, overall comments? One of the things I was going to ask you, as you look back on the board, any particular thing that's a legacy or any general comments that you'd like to say for the researchers that come um, to mind? <laughs> I enjoyed my time on the board. Uh, I I think that I had some influence on the university in changing policy somewhat by bringing in a president with uh, Steve Bearing was certainly different from Mark Hansen. And they were both fine at the fine gentlemen, but uh, uh, Steve was going uh, to push the university a lot harder than Art was. So, and uh, of course, he served. Uh, 15 years or so.
-hmm. plus was president. So it somewhat changed the policy of the university or direction somewhat. Mm -hmm. But uh, but it was always not a great school. I was always uh, felt lucky to have been part of it at one time or another. Right. Very nice. Yeah. Then they and any closing comment or think that will that do it for you? Huh? Any any other comment that you can think of? you'd like to share with us? <laughs> you know, one funny comment. Uh, uh, Dave Fendler is the dean of the egg school, which I was in. Uh, he was sitting on the steps of the union one day. I'd park my car over in the garage and walk across. And when I came up, he said, Dan, I now know why I spent so damn much time getting you through the university. And he did because I had problems. I was uh, one of the scholastic departments. Uh, I was too involved in too many things. But uh, anyway, he said, I now I know why. And I said, well, how does that Dave, and he said, now you can give me a raise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I think this concludes it. I thank you very, very much for the opportunity. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. I don't know what I can tell you or told you anything. It yes, it's been very helpful. Germaine to the Very helpful. Yeah, but, uh, we thank you. <laughs> it was a fun trip for me.